Now, Turkey's parliament has this week removed Coca-Cola and Nestle products from its restaurants over their supposed support for Israel amid the conflict in Gaza. A parliamentary source said the decision was meant to respond to huge public outcry against the companies for supporting Israel. The parliament didn't specify how Coca-Cola and Nestle supported Israel's war effort, though. Turkish activists have in recent days urged the public to boycott various Western companies they view as endorsing Israel's recent actions. Well, let's get more on this from our correspondent in Istanbul, Yulia Han. Yulia, what have you been hearing about exactly why these boycotts are happening and you know, how far they're likely to spread? Well, these uh, boycott campaigns, Rob, I think reflect Ankara's and Turkish President Erdogan's growing anger towards Israel and the West, the US especially, and at the same time, they are um, a reflection and a reaction uh, to anti-Israeli sentiment among the population here in Turkey, anger over Israeli bombardment of Gaza and the rising death toll among Palestinian civilians. We have seen uh, calls for boycotts of foreign brands by local municipalities and universities in recent days across Turkey. And when you walk the streets of some Istanbul neighborhoods, you see protest stickers or posters calling on people to stop buying from Starbucks, for example, or McDonald's and pro-government media here in Turkey are publishing long lists of allegedly pro-Israeli companies and uh, products from Coca-Cola and Nestle to the cosmetics producer L'Oreal or uh, the sporting uh, manufacturer, sporting goods manufacturer Adidas or uh, the South Korean car manufacturer Hyundai. But in most cases, it remains absolutely unclear what these brands and companies are supposed to have to do with the Israel Hamas war. It's not being explained at all. It leads to a lot of confusion over product origins and uh, many of these companies, as far as I can see, have not responded to these accusations. But um, facts seem to matter less than perception and many people I spoke to here in Istanbul told me they support such boycott campaigns. Let's listen. We can make our voices heard with these boycotts. Otherwise, nothing will happen. No one will hear us. I'm a shopkeeper and I don't want to sell certain products right now. I try not to buy Israeli products anymore, at least the ones I know. I shop more carefully now. I don't think it's rational to boycott Coca-Cola or Starbucks. They have nothing to do with the war. There's just no connection you can draw. I think people are overreacting. Yulia, lots of different perspectives there, but what are the potential economic impacts of you know, so many Turks turning their backs on these brands potentially going to be? Well, many political analysts and economists here in Turkey actually say that such boycott campaigns make uh, little sense and may not have the intended uh, impact. Take Coca-Cola, for example. It's an American multinational company, but the beverages are actually locally produced here in Turkey, the beverages that are being sold here by thousands of Turkish workers in more than 10 Turkish factories. So any boycott would actually harm them first and harm the already ailing Turkish economy. So these boycott campaigns are considered to be symbolic moves intended for the population to somehow vent their anger. President Erdogan is very well aware of the anti-Israeli sentiment here. And after some initial hesitation after October 7th and Hamas's atrocities, he actually became one of the most vocal critics of Israel's actions in Gaza. He accuses the West of being complicit in what he calls massacres and uh, war crimes. Uh, Turkey has recalled its ambassador from Israel. Erdogan said he is cutting ties completely with Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu, but still experts say that Turkey in the end is unlikely to cut off its uh, ties, trade relations, economic relations with Israel completely. That is not going to happen. Uh, the same holds true for Western uh, companies, the US, because after all, Turkey actually needs Western investment to repair its crisis-ridden economy. Okay, Yulia Hahn in Istanbul for us. Thank you very much.